We always hear about our qualities from people around us who compare us with our parents. We usually find people saying things like, She's got her excellent drawing skills from her dad or her beautiful singing is inherited from her mum. These are the qualities we inherit from our parents and which are present since birth. But there are several qualities which an individual develops in their lifetime depending on their interests and needs like developing certain abilities, learning new languages and so on. This happens gradually over a period of time as and when new interests or needs are encountered. This analogy can be used to study the types of immunity in humans. We have got introduced to the two major types of immunity in the previous video. These are the innate and the acquired immunity. Let's get into the details of these types now. We will begin our journey by learning about the innate immunity first. The term innate means inborn or congenital. That is, innate here stands for being present since birth. So is this type of immunity present in the organism since birth? That's right. All humans are born with an innate ability to fight off infections. This type of immunity is called innate immunity. And since it's present by birth, the type is not specific to any particular infection. Rather, it's a non-specific type. That means the ability helps the body fight various acute infections on its own. Now to fight the invading antigens, the system has to be prepared with some strong armed forces, right? In this case, the innate immunity has a few components that help it perform the necessary task. These include the physical barriers of the body, physiological barriers, the cells of the immune system and a few other important molecules. Let's have a look at these individually. The first on our list are the physical barriers. We say that innate immunity is the one with which we are born. So the physical barriers will include all the organs, or their secretions which help us fight infections. Can you cite an example for me? The largest human organ, that is the skin, acts as the first line of defense for the human body. So this physical barrier is an excellent example of the innate immunity. Similar to the skin, there are several other physical barriers like the mucus coatings on the respiratory, the urogenital and the gastrointestinal tract. On similar lines, we have physiological barriers and cellular barriers as well. The physiological barriers include the obstacles for the foreign invaders like acids present in the stomach, saliva secreted by the salivary glands and many more. And do we know what cellular barriers are? The immune cells like the lymphocytes and the monocytes form the cellular barriers as the invaders have to face them as soon as they enter the body. Now, which are the other molecules that we had mentioned? We know that the immune cells are capable of producing target-specific proteins called the antibodies against the invaders. The various types of antibodies can be grouped as the molecules produced for fighting off the infections. Now, since all the components, that is, the physical barriers, the physiological ones and the immune cells are present in our body right since birth, they are categorized as the components of innate immunity. Now that we've learned about the innate immunity, which is the first type of immunity, let's move ahead with the second type. The next type is acquired immunity. Here, as the name suggests, the immunity is acquired by the individual in due course of time. It's a type of immunity which is developed over a period of time and is highly specific in nature. And how does immunity develop gradually with time? I mean, we understand the fact that we are born with some ability to fight infections naturally as it happens in the case of innate immunity. But how can immunity of some specific type be developed? Let's understand that with an example. People these days love to ride their bikes without wearing a helmet. But that is definitely not a safe option. But if a person comes across any unfortunate accident, then a lesson for lifetime is learned from it. Over a period of time, the person develops a fear for the unfortunate happening and learns how to take precautions to avoid it. Same is the case with our acquired immunity. 
These are the numerous microbes present around us. They constantly find an opportunity to enter our body. Thus, our body has to encounter numerous pathogenic microbes constantly. These encounters help our body to develop strategies to fight these invaders. And this is how immunity is developed against specific pathogens that attack us. And this type of immunity keeps developing over our lifetime as we keep encountering several invaders. This is nothing but acquired immunity. One of the simplest examples of acquired immunity is that of chickenpox infection. The chickenpox virus will act as the antigen and our body will synthesize antibodies against it as an immune response. Our immune system has a very effective memory also known as immunological memory. So once the antibodies against this particular virus are synthesized, then the next time the body will recognize the same antigen and destroy it before it can cause any sort of infection. This is how the acquired immunity works. Now that we've got introduced to it, let's get into the details and the types of acquired immunity in the next video.